We will now begin the Copyright Office's sixth modernization webinar. During the program, attendees may submit questions using the Q&A panel on the right side of the WebEx screen. You might have to expand the panel by clicking on the arrow next to where the label Q&A appears. First, please welcome the Associate Register of Copyrights and Director of Public Information, Katie Rowland. Thank you, and welcome everyone to our sixth public webinar on modernization. This webinar will feature business process reengineering. Business process reengineering, or BPR, is an important part of modernization. This effort, which began this past July, will help the Copyright Office prepare for the other modernization initiatives. Joining me today to present on BPR will be Stephen Oswald, Program Analyst and Business, Man business Process Reengineering Project Manager with the Copyright Office's Copyright Modernization Office, and Craig Lowenstein, Program Manager with the Copyright Modernization Office. Once again, thank you for joining us, and thank you for your interest. Stephen? Hi, my name is Stephen Oswald. I've been at the Copyright Office for 19 years. I'm a Program Analyst and the Project Manager of the Business Process Reengineering effort. My colleague, Craig Lowenstein, will participate with me in the live question and answer session at the end of this presentation. To help ensure effective monetization of the Copyright Office, we will be performing business process reengineering, commonly referred to as BPR. BPR is an approach to change management that a number of large companies first adopted in the early 1990s. BPR involves analysis of an organization's current processes to identify opportunities for improved performance. BPR focuses on core business processes. A business process is a series of related activities or tasks performed to produce a product or a service. These tasks may be performed by people or they may be automated to be performed by machines. To facilitate analysis, tasks that make up business processes can be mapped to produce graphic re representations such as flowcharts of the process. The office chose processes that concentrated on six key areas, continuing to align with a strategic plan and modernization roadmap, increasing timeliness, addressing known challenges, increasing business objective accomplishment, optimizing customer experience and enhancing service quality, and reducing cost of operations. The end goal of reengineering business processes is an engaged, results-oriented professional workforce that has the tools it needs and is organizationally empowered to provide efficient, high-quality services to stakeholders and the public. BPR will also provide the library and the Copyright Office with support services to prepare the organization for future modernization initiatives. The Copyright Office's BPR initiative will support the achievement of defined objectives such as improving operations and services to achieve better processing times and creating timely public records, enhancing operational efficiencies through use of new or alternate technologies, containing costs of registration, recordation, and other Copyright Office services, strengthening security within the Copyright Office, and using staff and space efficiently. BPR began in July and is anticipated to conclude in June of 2020. The Copyright Office offers many services and as such is comprised of multiple business units which focus on specific aspects of these services. Accordingly, BPR is occurring across eight selected business units and we are concentrating on 66 processes across these units. Each identified business unit is participating in multiple sessions with industry experts to map current state processes, document gaps and business issues, and define the future state process redesign and prioritization. The business units interact and rely on one another, so while they are separate and unique, they all work together to support office services, functions, and goals. 
Multiple individuals from each business unit were selected to participate as process ambassadors in workflow sessions based on their direct knowledge and experience with customer process requirements, their understanding and expertise of the processes, their direct support of the process and its execution, and their ability to effectively implement change. The overall structure of these sessions is three-phased. In phase one, we establish the process scope. This means looking at the process to truly understand what it is, who is involved, and how the process is currently supported. This phase is high level. Phase two gets more in-depth with understanding the entire processes, the nuts and bolts of what holds that process together and how it functions. To do this, we ask three specific questions. What do you do? And is it legislatively mandated to be done and done that way? How does the process get done? And finally, who gets the work next? In other words, once the process is finished, where does it go and who uses it? During the third and final phase, the office transitions into rethinking and redesigning the processes. This includes determining ways to confirm that the new process or processes are effective and achieving the expected outcomes and goals of each of the business units and for the mission and services of the Copyright Office as a whole. This concludes with prioritizing the results and developing an implementation strategy. During the first phase of BPR sessions, we use a pictorial tool called SIPOC to look at a process and identify all the high-level elements that go into it. SIPOC itself is an abbrevi abbreviation for the elements that the diagram addresses. Suppliers, inputs, processes, outputs, and customers. The SIPOC example you see above takes you through making coffee to show this tool in action. SIPOC is a high-level way to look at and understand everything involved in a process. Mapping as-is processes using tools like SIPOC enables the office to identify the relevant aspects of a process before improvement work begins. In addition, the office is also looking to define metrics that will later help us measure improvements and efficiencies as processes are re-engineered. After creating a SIPOC, we begin to create a, a graphical representation of the current state process using Business Process Modeling Notation, or BPN. After defining the current state of a process, we start to look at options for its future state by performing waste, analysis, use, a lot, waste analysis using industry tools. Waste can be defined as anything that causes inefficiencies, which in turn often result in loss of timeliness and lower user satisfaction with services. Inefficiencies can occur across multiple different areas. For example, is a particular process slower because it relies on old technology? Are materials moved from one place to another more than necessary, causing duplication of back and forth movement? We're looking at all this and more across the office. One such example is asset management, which involves aspects of moving physical items and using older technology to track their location. We define the future state with an eye to strategy and governance, the service delivery mode, and operations. For strategy and governance, we look to, to create improvements in aligning with the office's strategic plan and the overall modernization roadmap. Establishing and communicating customer service standards, specifically timelines for action, and measuring performance against standards, and increasing a business unit's ability to deliver against its mission and business objectives such as process, shorter processing times. The service delivery model involves optimizing customer experience through increased timeliness of service delivery. This involves reducing work backlogs and decreasing customer wait times. Enhanced service quality also involves increasing office responsiveness to customers and reducing errors. This works together to create a transparent customer experience 
Part of this may entail enabling and expanding self-service tools and workflow tracking. Operations addresses known challenges and pain points. Effectively, we are using BPR to identify options to solve known improvement opportunities that impact process performance. We also anticipate using BPR to help control the cost of operations to execute the business unit's process. To do this, we are looking for areas where the process is currently performed manually or significant resources are expended to perform a process step. The final result of each business unit's series of sessions is their recommended updates to the selected processes, which will be reviewed by senior leadership. Approved recommendations, in turn, will result in requirements for the enterprise copyright system, planned to be a web-based, user-centered solution, which will span the entire office and its numerous functions, processes, and workflows. As we continue this webinar series, you'll hear more about emerging developments across modernization, including BPR recommendations and the evolution of the ECS. Thank you, Stephen. We would like to conduct a short poll. Please let us know how many people you have watching this webinar from your location. One person, two to four people, five to seven, eight to 10, or more than 10. We will now begin the question and answer portion of the program. Attendees can submit questions using the Q&A panel on the right side of the WebEx screen. You might have to expand the panel by clicking on the arrow next to where the label Q&A appears. Okay, first question. Based on the BPR activities already conducted, what are some examples of where BPR is expected improving efficiency? Good afternoon, this is Craig Lowenstein. One of the things that we learned when we conducted the analysis is that some of the activities crosses multiple offices. Um, and the lines of accountability weren't always clear to everyone undertaking those actions and it required a lot of coordination and collaboration. By uh, making a determination of who owns which activities thoroughly, um, we've conducted some uh, process evaluation and we've made recommendations for realignment. And we believe that that's going to increase transparency and centralize ownership so that we can increase uh, both uh, accountability and enforcement of standardized processes and activities. Thank you, Craig. Next question. How long will this BPR activity be going on? The project runs until the end of June 2020 and encompasses all offices and divisions of the U.S. Copyright Office. As we uh, are performing the, the process of analysis, uh, we are taking um, each um, business unit one at a time and running sessions and uh, making recommendations um, by the end of their particular um, series of sessions and those uh, recommendations are then available for analysis and review by senior leadership at the Copyright Office. Um, and so we are not waiting for all of the recommendations at the end of the um, whole process of BPR. We'll be uh, doing it in a rolling fashion and having recommendations build up um, through the process so that subsequent uh, business units that are undergoing analysis will have them available to review, and uh, that gives us a benefit of being able to perhaps um, uh, find where a recommendation from an earlier um, uh, addressed um, business unit may benefit uh, one or more other units. As somebody who has been through this process, I think that my department is one of the earlier ones that has been participating in BPR, that it is an interesting experience because it's not just one session. The um, people come back a couple of times, so it's a, kind of an iterative approach, and it's very comprehensive where you look at different aspects of the process and all the processes that we have going on and how they might be kind of intersecting with other divisions and other departments. So it's not just kind of you meet for one time. There are multiple meetings before you move on. Thank you, Katie. Katie and Steve both responded to that. Next question, how will this impact or improve uh, the Copyright Office's modernization plans? 
So this activity goes hand in hand with the modernization plan. This is designed to lay the foundation of the activities that are going to happen, and they're supposed to happen independent of the technology that we're going to use to support the modernization. So normally when you do uh, any sort of modernization activity, the first thing you want to do is build the processes and figure out what results you want to achieve, what type of uh, physical and digital outputs you want to have, and then you also want to think about um, what type of inputs you want to receive as well. Once you have those workflows put together with your processes and capabilities, you then start looking at what technology will best suit my needs for that. So we want to make sure that we're doing this in a coordinated and collaborative way. So it really is uh, one of the foundational pieces of the modernization. Now, a follow-up question we normally get from something like that is why has recordation already uh, gone underway for modernization? And one of the themes that we keep returning to was um, recordation uh, in its current state is still done by the wet signature paper-based documentation submission capability. Transforming that to a web-based digital submission platform was something we knew that was going to happen. So we were able to initiate that and make sure that BPR tracks alongside that as we modernize uh, the recordation department and the other surrounding capabilities for that. Okay, thank you, Craig. Um, our next question. The registration unit is currently redesigning the registration process and workflow. Is this occurring in parallel with BPR or is this registration unit working in close coordination with BPR? Hi, this is uh, Stephen. Um, that's a very good question. The, the two uh, activities are not exactly working in parallel. Um, but um, we have um, uh, staff uh, resources who are working in both of those processes and are paying very close attention. Um, I am involved in, in the, in the um, redesign as a, as a subject matter expert for the registration um, redesign. And um, I'm also the project manager for the BPR. Um, effort. Um, we are actually going to be beginning the BPR series of um, sessions in mid-January with registration program. And um, we will be paying close attention to uh, what we already know about some decisions, about um, things that have been discussed for uh, aspects of the redesigned uh, registration system. And so, um, They'll definitely uh, be uh, the, the results of what comes out of this. Um, I think uh, will will be aligned at that point. I think it's off. Uh, I think it's uh, interesting that that we're not completely uh, in parallel there, but it also gives us some opportunities because the registration program has been working and thinking so uh, diligently about what it is that they believe they can do to be better and provide better service. And so I think they're gonna be especially well prepared for the BPR sessions because they've been thinking this through for a couple of years now. Okay, thank you, Stephen. Um, our next question, will the results of the BPR be shared with the public? So predominantly, uh, a lot of the results will just be baked into the modernization activities. Now, depending on how transparent that is to the public will impact how the results are shared. For example, if we create a new capability within recordation or registration, and we determine that BPR decides that that's the best way forward, you will see that new functionality or capability. However, if we are talking about managing things more efficiently internally, like asset management. Those are things that we are more likely to happen internal, and you would see the results in that uh, be impacted by activities like increased processing times or things of that nature. So I don't think we're necessarily going to um, have a full report released to the public, but you will see that in the uh, operational activities as they are transformed and modernized. Thank you, Craig. So this concludes our webinar for this, for this afternoon. Um, when you sign out of the session, we encourage you to take part in a brief survey regarding your experience. We use this to improve our webinar program, so your feedback is greatly appreciated. Thank you for your participation today, and please join us for the next webinar.